Ever get that feeling? Like you're saying the right things, but your message is just not landing. Oh, yeah. Almost like you're accidentally sabotaging things. Mm. Well, you are not alone. We are diving deep today into this article all about these sneaky ways we can poison our communication. Interesting. The author calls them communication toxins. Mm -hmm. This one really piqued my curiosity. You sent this in, right? Yeah, this is a fascinating topic, I think. It's amazing how just like these subtle habits we have can really do damage over time. Right. And we don't even realize it. Exactly. And that's why we're diving in. This excerpt we have here, it lays out four major things to watch out for. Okay. Apparently, one of them is so bad, it's almost guaranteed to sink a relationship. Wow. So let's start unpacking these communication toxins. First up, criticism. Okay. So we all know that feedback is important, right? Right. But the line between like constructive feedback and straight up criticism, it, it could get a little blurry sometimes. Yeah. Criticism, it kind of attacks the person, not the behavior. Mm -hmm. Like saying, you're always so messy. Right. Instead of saying, hey, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed with how cluttered our living room is. Maybe we could work on a cleaning schedule together. Right. Yeah. That first one, that definitely stings a lot more. Right. It's like you're being criticized for who you are as a person. Exactly. It's not about what you did. Right, exactly. It makes people feel, you know, judged yeah. inadequate. Like there's something inherently wrong with them. Mm. So no wonder it creates tension right. and I, conflict. Yeah, for sure. Okay, this brings us to number two. The article calls this one the most dangerous of them all. Uh-oh. Contempt. Oh. I'm almost scared to ask, what makes this one so bad? Well, think of it this way. Contempt, it's basically the opposite of respect, right? Oh, it's like you're communicating that you think you're superior Ooh. to the other person. Got it. And often it comes out through like sarcasm. Oh, yeah. Or like ridicule, mockery, that kind of thing. Right. Think about it. You're sharing this really exciting idea with your partner and they just roll their eyes. And they're like, oh, that's brilliant. Oh, man. That's contempt yeah. in action. And it can be really soul crushing. Wow, you weren't kidding. It sounds like, yeah, it's like saying I'm better than you without actually saying the words. Exactly. No wonder it can be so damaging. It really erodes the foundation of any relationship because it's just showing that complete lack of empathy, wow. you know, regard for the other person's feelings. Right. You know? Okay, so we've got criticism uh, attacking the person. Contempt chipping away at respect. Mm -hmm. What's the next communication toxin we need to watch out for? Okay, so this one is defensiveness. Okay. I think we all do this sometimes. Yeah. It's kind of a natural reaction when we feel attacked. Right. Or blamed. But instead of just acknowledging the issue, we deflect, make excuses, or we point fingers. Mm. It's that classic, it's not my fault, it's yours. Oh, yeah. I've definitely been there. Yeah. It's so common. But why is defensiveness so toxic? Yeah. Because it feels, I mean, like a pretty normal way to react when you feel cornered. It is normal. Yeah. It's a human response. Mm -hmm. But it actually prevents, like, productive dialogue and resolution. It's like um, putting up a wall. Okay. That blocks any chance of real understanding right. or connection. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. All right, okay. so the last one on the list is stonewalling. The word itself just sounds intense. It can be. Yeah. It's like the silent treatment. Oh, no. But like on steroids. Oh, wow. You just withdraw from the conversation completely, shut down emotionally, maybe avoid eye contact. Right. You give one word answers. Yeah. Or maybe even <laughs> physically leave the room. Oh, wow. You know? Yeah, it's basically like saying, I don't even care enough to engage with you. Right. Talk about frustrating. I bet that makes the other person feel completely dismissed and unimportant. You're exactly right. Wow. It sends the message that you don't value their thoughts or feelings. Right. And, you know, it might seem like a way to avoid conflict, but it actually just creates more distance and resentment over time. Yeah, okay. So now that we're sufficiently terrified of these communication toxins, yeah. how do we actually fix things? Yeah, that's the important question. The article mentions some antidotes. Oh, interesting. Tell me more about those. Well, the fascinating thing is, these antidotes aren't like these complex psychological strategies or anything. Oh, They're ahead. pretty simple, actually, but powerful shifts in perspective and behavior. Okay. It's kind of like learning a new language, the language of healthy communication. I love that. Yeah. Okay, so how do we replace the poison with something, you know, nourishing? Okay, well, let's start with the antidote to criticism. The article calls this a gentle startup. 
So instead of attacking the person, you focus on just expressing your own feelings and needs. Right. Using I statements. Oh, interesting. So instead of saying you're always late. Right. You could say, I get anxious when I'm waiting and I'm not sure when you'll arrive. Oh, that's a really good example. You're focusing on your experience. Exactly. Without blaming or accusing. Yeah. I think that makes it so much easier to hear. It really takes the sting out of the feedback. Yeah. And it encourages a more collaborative approach to problem solving. I love that. Okay. Okay, what about the antidote to contempt? Yeah. How do we combat something so deeply ingrained in our communication? The key is to cultivate appreciation. Okay. I know it sounds simple, but actively looking for the good in your partner. Right. And expressing gratitude can be really, really powerful. Okay. So imagine you come home to a messy kitchen. Uh oh. Instead of rolling your eyes, you could try saying, Hey, thanks for making dinner tonight. I really appreciate you taking care of that, even if the kitchen looks like a war zone right now. Okay, so less eye rolling, more noticing the good. Exactly. I can get on board with that. It shifts your focus from what's wrong yeah. to what's right. I love that. And even small gestures can go a long way in rebuilding respect and that connection. Makes sense. All right, so what about defensiveness? How do we break that habit of deflecting and blaming? Ooh, this one is tough. But the antidote is taking responsibility. Okay. Even if it's just partial responsibility. Mm. So instead of immediately saying, it's not my fault, yeah. try to see things from their perspective. Okay. Maybe you did contribute to the problem in some way, even if it wasn't intentional. Right, so instead of automatically throwing up that wall, you're making an effort to understand and acknowledge their experience. Yes. And even if you don't agree with their perspective, you can still validate their feelings. You might say something like, I understand why you're feeling hurt by what I said, even if that wasn't my intention. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So last but not least, how do we replace that toxic silence of stonewalling with something healthier? Well, the antidote here is self-soothing. Okay. It's about recognizing when you're getting overwhelmed. Mm-hmm and communicating that you need a break. So instead of shutting down completely, you might say, I'm feeling a little flooded right now and I need some time to process this. Can we circle back to it later? It's like hitting the pause button. Yes. Instead of just like ejecting from the conversation completely. Exactly. Oh, I love that analogy. It's about responsible disengagement rather than complete withdrawal. Right. And recognizing that taking care of your own emotional needs is not selfish. It's essential for healthy communication. This has been eye-opening. We learned about the four major communication toxins, criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about how to replace them. Mm. Gentle startups, appreciation, taking responsibility, and self-soothing. It's really about just consciously shifting from those toxic patterns right. to healthier alternatives. And it does take effort, but it's so key yeah. to building stronger and mm. more fulfilling relationships. Absolutely. So as you go about your day-to-day, -day, I challenge you to pay attention to your communication patterns. Do any of these toxins sound familiar? And more importantly, what one small change can you make to communicate more effectively? Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. And until next time, happy communicating. Yeah, happy communicating.